Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight, I'm not gonna lie, I was ready for bed and I laid down and I just happened to open Discord and I realized the patch notes were up so I wanted to get this video out as quickly as possible so I threw on a shirt and here we are. So uh, as always, these videos tend to be a little bit lengthy so uh, if you need to get a snack or a drink, go for it. We will wait. Are you back? Appreciate you. Also, Let's get right into it. So, March update. All that is gold does not glitter. Interesting. So, we have maintenance times. Xbox and PlayStation will be March 7th, 2 to 5 a.m. Central Time, 7 to 10 a.m. UTC. Update size looks like 2,500 megabytes, a.k.a. 2.5 gigabytes. So, make sure you schedule that. Um, captains, the new update is closing in. Let's find out what what's new this time around such update much text better tldr we got you gold runner campaign rewards include u.s tier 7 destroyer summers interesting and saint patrick's day themed content italian battleship tech tree is now researchable with tier 7 vittorio Veneto on top and loads more of course as always, before we begin the deep dive, gear up with six Regia Marina camos and six red, white, and blue ones using the code Z8EL8K3ER8 at World of Warships Legends.com forward slash code redeemer. Gold Runner Campaign. Summers was the lead ship of her class, and she saw action in various naval theaters from the South Atlantic to the Mediterranean. I don't know why I said Mediterranean, it's Mediterranean. Her most notable performance, however, was outside of the battlefield. She ship was outside of the battlefield. The ship transported a consignment of gold from England to New York, and that's the key to the campaign name. Okay. So, Tier 7 Summers. Very interesting. Uh, eight rapid reloading guns and up to 12 torpedoes at once makes Summers a true threat. Oh boy. And her top speed of 38.6 knots to that. And you have a born winner. <clears throat> so it it's down a turret from the Fletchers, right? Fletchers have 10 guns, I believe. So it's missing a turret, but it gets more torpedoes. Fantastic. If there's one thing that I've always said that we need in this game, it's more torpedoes. Am I right? I know I'm right. But either way, here's the uh, layout for the gold. These are the things that you can get for the campaign. And there you have it. With uh, traditional 100 milestones in five weeks, here's the list of things that you can attain. Without Admiralty backing, you get all of this. Mm, bonk. The value of the rewards without Admiralty backing, 15,877 doubloons. Now with Admiralty backing, you get all of that. Plus, you get all of this. For a total doubloon value of 67,790 doubloons. The campaign comprises 100 milestones, so getting everything right away will require 27,250 doubloons. You need to finish the weekly tasks each week this time. And if you're up for a challenge, there's also a weekly set of hard mode missions. The full breakdown of the campaign missions will be available on Monday, March 7th as a standalone blog post. St. Patrick's Day 2022. We've got Brady McMordoff. Mac, Mac Brady McMordoff. We'll go with that. <laughs> I apologize. Brady McMordoff has signal flare, legendary skill, and tinted tracers. So he gets his own little uh, commander guys, obviously. And it obviously with John Jellico, it looks like it's going to be a British... British theme one. Uh, but may the best day of your past be the worst day of your future. It's time to celebrate the greenest holiday of the year, this update. And as usual, we've prepared some special themed content for you. Brady McMordoff, Commander Guys, the Mr. Alleged Leprechaun himself, is here. Give him a try to see everything in green. Available for use with British and American horse historical commanders. Oh, nice. It can be used on Americans, too. St. Patrick's Day Ensemble Skin for Tiger 59. 
Every, everything looks better in green. There's certainly no doubt about that. Learn more about the all-new Tiger 59 in the sections below. Okay. New St. New St. Patrick's Day patch and flag. Plus 200% luck if you equip those. I mean, I'm assuming this is tongue-in-cheek. But God knows I could use all the luck I can get, so I might have to grab these up. <laughs> Pot, go, Pot of gold. Guaranteed to drop 1,250 doubloons and three times St. Patty's camo. Has chances of dropping green skins for Belfast and Tiger 59. Commander As well as Commander Progression items, credits, and even a super prize if you're a Leprechaun lucky. The exact drop rates can be found here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that before we move forward. Um, wait, what? I don't see it. I don't see it! Really? You don't, don't say that things are here if it's not here, Wargaming! <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, St. Patrick's Day content starts March 14th, so get ready. Also, Belfast is coming back, which is pretty normal for St. Patrick's Day, so take a look out for her if you want to see Belfast. Uh, Italian battleships arrive in full force. Vittorio Veneto, a.k.a. Roma, a.k.a. Yeah, you, you've already seen this ship. It's a Roma. Except this gets SAP secondaries. The mighty Italian battleships are finally at large. The line is leaving early access and becoming fully researchable. With monstrous exhaust smoke generator equipped Vittorio Veneto and her nine 15-inch 381mm guns ready to scatter steel and victory at the top of it. If you need to be reminded what Italian battleships are all about, refer to our blog post here. New ships of the update. The Tier 4 Hill, which is a Tier 4 American destroyer. She's fast and handles well with rapid reloading guns and a smoke generator that lasts for a long time. A classic American destroyer is at your service. Three torp launchers included. Alright. The Tier 6 Tiger 59, which is a British cruiser, apparently. Looks like small guns, so must be a light cruiser. Accurate guns, the ability to equip a smoke generator and radar simultaneously. Radar Tier 6, not bad. For a light cruiser. Uh, and great maneuverability make this British cruiser a dangerous threat. Beware of the symbol of this year. Ah, gotcha. The year of the tiger. Beautiful. Tier 7 Champagne. This French battleship offers accurate and quick traversing 16-inch guns and triple turrets. Her speed is nothing to smirk at and is additionally improved by the engine boost consumable, which allows for fast relocations around the map Champagne is making her glorious return and is available in the store for 750,000 global XP. To back up this selection of ships, there's also a set of camos, including some new ones available for credits. Check the store for the full range during the first week of the update, available until March 14th. Soviet carriers are already in World of Warships Legends. Great. Soviet aircraft carriers are here with all new skip bombers, and unique full squadron attacks, this researchable range is ready for you to try it out. The line itself, available for a Tier 3 Battleship Ganget, unlocked and maxed out, looks as follows. The Tier 3 Comsomolets. Comsomolets. Comsol I, I, I don't know how you say that at one time. Comsomolets. That's the best you get. Tier 5 Sirov and Tier 7 Pobeda. Pobeda. Pobeda? Pobeda. We'll go with that. Pobeda. Pob we'll go with that and then screw it up. Pobeda. We'll go with that. I don't know which one of those pronunciations is correct. If any of them are correct, I'd be surprised. Uh, but yeah, so Soviet carriers are here, even though they never existed. Woo! Also, what we needed, more carriers. <laughs> it's all right, though. What could be worse than, 
you know, Parsifal. I'm sure the skip bombers will be completely and utterly balanced. Um, yeah. Prominent commander, oh, Yevgeny Preobrazhensky. Yevgeny Preobrazhensky. That's completely wrong. Yevgeny Preobrazhensky. Zinsky. Priobro okay. Yevgeny Priobrovzinski. That's the best I've got. Good luck. Is here to lead squadrons into battle. You can obtain this perfect officer for Soviet carriers through a dedicated free set of missions via commander crates. God bless America here. Stay out of my mouth. For 900,000 commander XP in the store. American carrier. American carrier. Aircraft carrier Pobeda has her very own feature, JATO, Jet Assisted Takeoff. Woo! We're getting jets. Actual jets. Yay. I think I saw a Flambass video recently where he was talking about this, and uh, it didn't go well for the enemies. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, which helps the planes get up and away quicker. It, importantly, Tier 3 Komsomolets does not have skip bombers in her arsenal and offers regular HE bombers instead. The out-of-sight skill has been changed to work with skip bombers. Okay. Balance changes. Oh, here we go. We always looking for balance changes. I'm sure there's a great list of good things that are only going to be good for the, the game. It's only natural that with the new carriers incoming, the existing ones are getting tweaked. The balancing logic is very simple this time. The carriers that were changed ended up lagging a bit behind their peers, so we're giving them a much needed boost. You might consider the Shokaku buff to be a bit conservative, but let's see what happens. While it's widely believed that high tier carriers lack in damage and earnings, they actually beat battleships in that regard, with the caveat of battleships being a much more popular ship type. That being said, we're boosting Tier 3 and Tier 7 credit earning modifiers by a few percent to make the ships a little more attractive to those who normally avoid them. How about you just make them more interesting to play? Like, I don't know how you can do it. I'll be honest. You can't make them more interesting to play without completely breaking them for the rest of us who don't want to play them. But they are actually the most boring class in the world to play. Okay? They just are. I don't know why people play them. I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. But maybe they just like to hear the planes go... <laughs> maybe that's it. You guys will have to let me know down in the comments below. But personally, I think it's boring as crap to play as a carrier. Just not a lot of fun. But uh, Tier 3 American Langley. Damage from both dive and torpedo bombers increased by 5%. Their speed increased by 10 knots. You know, because again... Tier 3 and Tier 5 carriers, like, they just don't feel like they, they have enough, you know, considering they can't be shot down by their Tier chips. Like, you literally have nothing you can do against them. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you should buff the AA on all the ships at Tier 3 and Tier 5. How about that? Japanese Tier 7 Shokaku. Concealment for dive bombers improved from 10 to 7.5 kilometers. Aircraft restoration time for stock dive bombers increased from 66 to 70 seconds. So the restoration time went up. So it got a nerf there. And then aircraft restoration time for upgraded. Okay, so the stock dive bombers got a nerf. But the upgraded dive bombers get a buff. That makes sense. British Tier 3 Hermes. Maximum bomb damage increased from 2,400 to 3,200. Maximum torpedo damage increased from 13,800 to 14,500. Good God. I mean, they're slow as crap, and you're not likely to hit them. But seriously, like you're getting up into destroyer range damage from an airdrop torpedo. That's a little ridiculous. Torpedo arming time reduced from three and a half to three seconds. Not a huge change there, but it's going to allow you to drop closer, meaning you're more likely to hit your target. 
Torpedo speed increased from 35 to 40 knots. Good lord, they are buffing the crap out of this thing. And torpedo spotting range increased by about 15%. Great. So you can see them, even though, I mean, it's not hard to see them when they're dropping right on top of you. Just say it. German Tier 7 August von Parseval. Damage from both dive and torpedo bombers reduced by 5%. Thank you. I'll, I, I'll say thank you. However, those are not the only changes to be implemented. We're bringing in changes for two destroyers. Soviet Tier 6 Minsk. Minsk received a buff a few updates ago, which made her a little too ambitious. So we're calling the reload of both her main guns and torpedoes to decrease the total damage she can inflict in battle. Upgraded artillery preset reload time changed from 3.5 to 4 seconds. Reload time for both torpedo presets changed from 101 to 110 seconds for stock and from 98 to 110 seconds for upgraded. Nice. Pan-Asian Tier 7 Shan Yang, or CN Yang, whichever it is. I think some people tell me it's CN Yang, so I apologize if that's just how it actually goes. Cien Yang was a bit subpar compared to her peers, as she's not the best in knife fights and her torpedoes do particular or do require particular targets. Not wanting to make her too universal, we're doubling down on her torpedoes, so implementing the correct playstyle with her will be rewarded accordingly. Torpedo range increased from 9 to 10.1 kilometers, and maximum torpedo damage increased from 17,000 to 18,000 for upgraded torpedoes. Uh, secondary lock and AA engagement. This is not strictly balance, but balance adjacent. You can now set a priority target for your secondary armament, as well as turn your AA guns on or off. Thank you, Wargaming. This is something, both of these things are something. This is huge. Like I like how they put this at the end of the patch notes, like nobody's going to get to this point and read this. This is huge. First of all, for you DD mains out there, trust me, I don't like it. As a battleship main, when a DD gets to run around completely un unabated. However, I think it's bullcrap when you're in a DD and you're trying to do your job and a carrier can just zoom in on you because your stupid AA is just sitting there going, ta -ta 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 We got him! We got a plane over here! We got a destroyer right here! Come shoot us! Ba -ta 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 -ta. Why? Turn your guns off! Rig for silent running, damn it! So yeah, that is a big change and being able to set a target for your secondaries so that your secondaries actually target somebody that can be damaged is huge. I cannot tell you how many times I've had, and they, they said they tweaked this a couple updates back. Remember when they're like, oh, the secondaries will now prioritize destroyers over battleships and cruisers. It doesn't help. It literally doesn't help. I still watch destroyers sitting six kilometers from me. My AA just daka daka and away, and there's a bow tank and battleship, and every one of my secondaries are shooting at the battleship every time. So the fact that we can choose a target now for our secondaries is going to be huge when it comes to like keeping those destroyers back, at least, or or cruisers, or just broadside targets in general when you know you're going to be able to get some damage rather than shooting at the bow of a bow tanking battleship with your secondaries. So that is a big change, and I do appreciate that. I'm sure I'm going to be on the receiving end of destroyers that get a sneak around all sneakily-like because they turn their AA off and our carrier can't use his brain to actually find them. So, yeah, we'll see. Gunlock has also been added to this panel, which will be especially useful for presets without gunlock. Okay. Bug fixes, a bug that caused the returning speed of squadrons to be the same as their speed before returning, has been fixed. A bug that caused the returning speed of squadrons to be the same as their speed before returning has been fixed. You literally said the exact same thing twice, Wargaming. You thought we wouldn't notice? We did. It's like, ah, we, we fixed a lot of bugs. It's the same bug, but it's like six times. Heh. <laughs> I know, I'm giving you guys crap, but you guys you guys know it. Fixed an issue that caused background images in the mission carts to sometimes not refresh quickly enough when players switch from one to another. Fixed a bug that caused Grumman TBF planes glass surfaces to strobe when the planes took off. 
fixed a bug that rarely caused bureau trial slots to op or to not open up if a date change happened while players were in the trial UI. Moving a ship onto terrain on the neighbor's map should now be significantly more difficult. Moving a ship onto terrain on the neighbor's map. Now this is a glitch that I gotta figure out. Where were you able to go aground on the neighbor's map? I have never seen this. Ever. But then again, I play the game as it's intended. I don't go, like, sailing to port to try to get on to shore. Single tube torpedo launching has been renamed to single launcher for Huang Yi. Uh, for mobile, they reduced the or removed the ability to tap multiple UI items simultaneously in headquarters. And for mobile, they also fixed a bug that caused area control indicators to have visual artifacts appearing as vertical gray stripes. Miscellaneous. The Xbox Series X now supports ray-traced shadows. You'll most likely see the improvements when looking at ship's small details. To make sure that ray tracing is on, you have to run the game at 4K and enable RT support on your console. The HUD minimap is now higher resolution and has brighter object borders. Tweaked the map borders for domination mode on Sea of Fortune, Warrior's Path, and Nor Northern Waters maps. Any unspent winter coins, which is pretty fitting with spring is finally arriving, will be converted into credits at the exchange of one winter coin for 1,500 credits. Okay? And visual improvements have been made to the water on the following maps. Islands, Big Race, and Polar. Enjoy the spring, be lucky, and turn the tide. Alright guys, so there's the update patch notes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I think that there's some good things coming here. There's also some interesting things that I'm not looking forward to coming in. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm already just thinking about all the comments about the carriers coming. Um, with the Skip Bombers and the Jado. Like, it's gonna be... Whew, it's going to be fun, guys. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.